Now, what is up with these .eth names and what is an ENS domain? That's what I want to cover today. If you've been um, interacting with me on Twitter or maybe anyone else from the uh, crypto or Web3 space, you might have seen these .eth endings to various names. So for instance, on Twitter for me, I have um, my name set up as natterdabbit.eth over here. And you'll see that a lot in uh, other people's profiles as well, people that are involved in various crypto communities. These are basically um, resolving to an Ethereum address. So there's a few different things that people are doing with this. First of all, you know, it's a really cool way to maybe signal to different people in the community that you're involved and you're kind of like part of the culture. Um, it's also a way to actually display your um, address just in case someone needs to send you a payment for something or someone wants to send you an NFT or anything like that. Um, another thing you can do with this is you can actually check out uh, someone's NFTs. So if I go to rainbow.me and I pass in anyone's um, ENS domain, it'll just show up there, uh, all of their assets. So I can see all of the NFTs that I own, um, things like that. In addition to that, we can actually go to etherscan. I think it's etherscan.io and I can just insert an ENS uh, domain here. I can see where it resolves. So it's resolving to this address and I see that um, I can view all of the transactions for myself. Um, I can see my token balances and things like that. Um, various types of transactions like ERC20, ERC721. Um, in addition to that, like I can actually send other people money. So let's say um, I wanted to send some money to someone else. Um, let's find another address. So like I might say um, ENS just to kind of get other people that are talking about this. Um, so dame.eth, this is the first person that comes up. I actually follow this person. They work at, uh, with Rainbow Wallet. Um, let's say I wanted to send them some money. You know, I could do that. I could just go here to my, my wallet and I could say um, I want to send this person money. I just paste in the um, you know ENS domain send them the money and that's it. So it's really simple. That way you don't have to keep up with someone's like long uh, address and it's it's less likely to get incorrect. And then the final thing that you might do with this is let's say I wanted to send a an NFT to someone. I could basically click on transfer and I could basically paste in their ENS name and just click transfer and then that would be it. They would receive that. So it's a lot simpler um, way to send payments. It's a lot simpler way to receive payments. It's a lot simpler way to kind of think about these Ethereum wallet addresses as people are adopting them um, more and more. Now, how do you actually get one of these? So let's look at how we might do that. I'm going to go ahead and buy one uh, on this on this recording. So I will just Google ENS domains and you'll see that this comes up and you could think of this as kind of like on the web where you use a um, domain name that resolves to some um, actual address somewhere. You don't actually have to know that. We can just go to twitter.com or google.com and the, res uh, the resolution happens for us. So I'm gonna click launch app. And one of the projects that I'm working on is called how to Ethereum. So let's see if we can find that. And it looks like it's available. So we're gonna go ahead and choose uh, request to register. And this is gonna be a couple of different transactions. So first of all, we're gonna wait for this initial transaction to go through. And from there, we can then continue the registration process. All right, so that first step is completed. We can now click register to continue to the next step. Here, we're gonna go ahead and click confirm, wait for this transaction to complete. All right, and now the transfer and the purchase is complete. So we can now set the reverse record. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And here I'm going to select the ENS domain and we'll go ahead and click save. And now our reverse record is set and we have now associated both netterdabit.me as well as howtoethereum.eth with my um, wallet address. So um, we're all set up now. We can start accepting payments. We can start sending transactions. Um, we can do all of that stuff and um, we're ready to go. So to test it out, let's go back to Etherscan. 
and we'll go to how to ethereum.eth and we'll see that we have the reverse record set to my address and we're all set up now. So that's what I wanted to cover today. Um, again, I also have some stuff on Solana, which is pretty cool. So you can go uh, to the Solana naming service. I don't remember the website, but you can just uh, Google it. Um, I managed to pick up natter.soul. I managed to pick up a couple of really cool ones, uh, pretty, pretty basic ones, um, because it's still fairly early in that ecosystem. Um, I'm assuming that you'll see similar things coming out or already there maybe in other parts of the um, Web3 ecosystem, crypto, blockchain stuff. So I think it's a really cool UX improvement. It's a really cool you know, um, way to kind of make it a lot simpler for people to interact with different accounts. A lot easier for people to send payments, of course. So yeah, I like it a lot. And uh, that's why you're seeing a lot of people using it. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned a little something. Um, be sure to subscribe and like this uh, video if you are interested in this type of stuff. And I will see you soon next time. Thank you.